guys, David Nerd 1, 2 and 2, and it's something different day. Ah uh, yes, you may have noticed that it's been a couple of weeks since I posted one of my list videos for the main sets of the game. Uh, I was getting a little burned out on it, and uh, I don't know, just getting yuki would out. So I wanted to take a small break and do some other things with myself, as well as get some of my life stuff in order. So I figured, okay, let's, uh, let's get some business done on that end. If you're watching this at a later date, not the date when it came out, none of this is going to matter, and my my set series will have already recommenced, so this will be completely meaningless to you. Meaningless to you. However, if uh, if you are watching this the day it comes out, then uh, I at least figure I owe you guys an explanation as why it's been a little quiet lately. But anyway, without further ado, we are going to talk about a different card game today, something I've been toying around with lately because, like I said, I was getting a little burned out on Yu-Gi-Oh, and I want to try something I could else get into that was also also kind of fun that wasn't going to be an entirely new card game to learn and get back catalogs of cards and be really a giant pain in the butt. And that game is Keyforge. Keyforge is a game created by the creator of Magic, Richard Garfield. And the way the game works actually ends up feeling a lot like Magic and it gives you this feeling that the guy, you know, what Frankenstein his own creation and was like, oh man, I've now come to regret my creation and the problems that ensued, so I'm going to make a new one and it's gonna be better with blackjack and hookers. And out of that came Keyforge. In this video, we're gonna kind of do a quick glance over how the game kind of works and, and a, a very, very brief and how to actually play it so you guys understand what I'm talking about. But it's not gonna be in-depth actually how to learn to play Keyforge video because frankly, uh, if you guys want me to do that, I will do that in a separate video when I don't actually have to give you an introduction to the game as a whole. So the first part's gonna be what is it, why it's unique, and why anyone would care about it, how to play, and then we're gonna do some cons and some pros to the game, why you might want to pick it up. First of all, what is Keyforge? Well, to call it a trading card game would probably be incorrect because 100% it is not. It is a card game. You use cards, you play against an opponent, like you duel them like you do in Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic or Pokemon, but trading, unless you're trading an entire deck for another entire deck, doesn't work in this game. Now you might ask, how the hell is that even possible? And that is because this is a unique deck game. The gimmick with Keyforge is that every single deck in this game is pre-constructed. You buy them out of boot booster packs, they are 36 cards plus one Archon card. Archon is basically you as the player, it's like your avatar card. And your Archon has a unique procedurally generated name on his card as well as the back of every other card in the deck. So uh, you can't mix cards between decks because your Archon's deck is his deck, it's his only deck, and there is no other Archon in existence with the Archon's name that you have. It's completely unique to you. As well as your Archon being completely unique, the 36 cards that actually makes up your main deck are also a random 36 card assortment. Meaning, even though there's only 320 cards in the first set of the game, the only set that we have right now, everyone's deck is still unique to that deck because it's only 36 cards out of 320 and a 36 card random assortment is will always be different there's a bajillion combinations you can do with that number so everyone's deck is unique in our archon and deck list msrp for a keyforge deck is ten dollars well uh, just i'm gonna put that out right now i'm not gonna comment on it i'm just gonna refer to it later this is an extremely extremely strange way to to basically base a game around of however it eliminates the meta gaming of it so that everyone's playing some weird random janky deck so everyone's everyone's decks pretty much on the same level so it really comes down to the skill of the player not the wallet so how do you play keyforge well the basic rules of keyforge are you need to win by forging keys go go figure how do you forge a key well at the start of your turn if you have six amber you can spend that six amber to forge a key all right well then what's amber <laughs> Uh, it's basically dual links gems. There are ways to accrue amber via card effects or by simply making a simple game action and you do that throughout the game in order, to, basically during the main phase of the game, in order to accrue amber so that by the next turn you can use that amber to forge a key. Once you have three keys you win the game. There are no life points, there are no deck outs, there is no other way to win the game unless they print an instant win card which I don't think they have yet. No, the only way to win the game is to forge three keys which actually sounds Sounds a lot easier than it is if the both players are either no no what nothing of what they're doing or they both know exactly what they're doing. What kind of cards would you expect to see in this card game? Will you have creatures, actions, artifacts, and upgrades? Creatures are just like your monster cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. 
Actions are basically spells, artifacts. I mean, artifacts are kind of like traps. You don't set them, uh, but they take a turn to use. So they're like a trap. And upgrades are like equip spells. You stick them directly under the monster though, not in a spell or trap zone. Uh, so they're, they're their like, own card because they act differently. But the Yu-Gi-Oh analogy would be equip spells. There is no mana system. Everything in the game is essentially free, uh, which is very, very Yu-Gi-Oh. So what's stopping this thing from turning into just a giant build board match like it is in Yu-Gi-Oh and why everyone hates it? Well, because your deck is split into three houses. Think of houses a lot like attributes in Yu-Gi-Oh. Actually, they're, it's extreme. It's exactly what they are. They're attributes. Your deck has three houses in it. 12 cards from one house, 12 cards from the second house, and 12 cards from the third house. 36. Those 12 cards are random within the house, but you will always have three houses. There are, there are what they call maverick cards, where you might get one from a fourth house. Uh, that tends to be a very powerful card. Uh, with the way the game works, that, that's extremely rare. It's, it's cool if you get one. That's, that's kind of cool. But for the most part, three houses. At the start of your turn, after you've decided whether or not you can actually forge a key, you need to declare a house, or attribute. And for the rest of the turn, you can only use cards from that house. There is your mana cost. Instead of just being able to just do whatever you want or have to wait till you have accrued land cards, which is annoying, or energies like in Pokemon, nope, it's free like Yu-Gi-Oh, but you can only play darks this turn. You can only play lights this turn. So everyone's deck has three attributes, so you're probably at any time only playing one third of your hand, which is self-limiting. How clever. So if you declare the house Dis, which are a bunch of extra dimensional demons, really cool, really cool type, you can only play Dis this turn. So if you have Brognar or uh, Untamed in your deck, you can't use those two, at least this turn. And that applies anywhere from playing it from your hand to the field or using it on the field to attack or using its effect to activate or reap. I'll explain that in a sec. And like I said before, you do not have life points in this game. So when you put your creatures into battle, you are doing it to take cards off your opponent's field, not to take life points away. So you are basically, they're, they're more like you're attacking their villagers than you are attacking their soldiers because you mine resources from your own creatures. Creatures in this game can do like three things. Attack, like I just said, activate their effects, or reap. Reaping is how you get most of your amber in this game, it's how you forge most of your keys, so therefore when you actually play a creature to the field, you need to now make some sort of strategic decision, do you want to attack with it, use its effect, or use it to just mine a resource. Every card it pretty much can only be used once unless you can loop it. In that case, you can only use them six times if you manage to loop a card by name one, more than once, or you can only play six copies of a card at one time. Again, self-limiting. And that's pretty much how the game uh, the game proceeds. You always have six cards in your hand at the start of your turn unless something has told you not to because you draw at the end of your turn. Isn't that neat? You draw at the end of your turn and you always replenish your hand. You cannot deck out. If you deck out, you just put your discard pile into your deck and shuffle it and continue play. So your win condition is to make keys and gather resources. It's kind of more of a chill card game. It's less aggressive because battle is more of a strategic decision and less of a requirement as it is in like something like Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon, which is like the whole point of Pokemon. It's a Pokemon battle. So obviously Keyforge is a very strange game. You are locked into a 36 card deck you have no control over it would be illegal for you to have control over it you need to make best with what you have and at the end of the day it doesn't play like any other card game at all because it's about how much can you get not how much can you dish out and with this really weird thing comes a few cons con number one is there is no deck building meaning like I said before so that there is really no way of improving a deck if there's a couple cards in it that you actually like and you want to make that deck better so you can do better in tournaments uh, no that one's on you you need to get good you your deck is as good as it will ever be, unless you just buy a new deck. Also, there are no side decks in this game, so if your opponent has a deck that is better against your deck than your deck is against his for whatever weird reason, it either relies on you to just get good and play better, or uh, depending on the tournament, there might be some sort of rule in place for that. Keyforge, being that it's completely stuck in your deck, has some really strange formats. Uh, like Draft is extremely cool in this, in this game because it's almost it's almost built to be a draft format. It kind of is. But there's like weird ones where like game two, you switch decks and crap like that. Like, <laughs> like, there, like this looks like really fun stuff you can do with this because you, your opponent can't even like steal your cards and put them in his deck because they have different card backs on it. But like I said, that is really weird. So the, the getting used to a different style of card game hump could be a little different for people who are more used to things like Yu-Gi-Oh. But I want to, what are some of the cool pros of this game? 
Well, because it is a sealed format, basically, there is no metagaming. There is no ash blossoms to buy, no pot of extravagances, no super, super bloated buyouts in the secondary market because they simply cannot exist unless you're just buying an entire deck. The cost of entry is extremely low. You can go get a deck for $10. That's all you need to spend as long as you have some some dice if you're playing in the backyard. It's, they're legal in tournament play, but whatever or just tokens, using tokens really. And that's all you need, 10 bucks. Yu-Gi-Oh can't even be that cheap. We got Salamangrates as a $10 structure deck, but you need three of those. So therefore, even the cheapest tier one deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is still three times the price of a tier one deck in Keyforge. And like I said, because everyone's kind of dealing with their, the same 36 cards of jank, it really comes down to you just getting better as a player. It's more strategic. So it teaches you, it, it teaches you some, some, some good like strategy as opposed to just deck building. I'm a very good deck builder in Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm not a very good player, so I find myself building really cool decks that I cannot pilot very well, and that's annoying, and I need to get better at piloting decks. Uh, in this game, I have no choice. Also, I kind of like the fact that battle is not the focus of the game. I just think it's kind of neat. Resource gathering and kind of turtling up is just as a viable strategy as anything else, which is just very, very different from other card games, so it's kind of cool just to play something else. So that's kind of what I think about Keyforge. Whether or not you play it competitively or you just want to pick it up as a cheap alternative to Yu-Gi-Oh to give yourself something different to do every once in a while, this is probably the most perfect game in the world for that. You do not need a card back catalog at all, you just need 10 bucks and you can play an entirely different card game with your friends and not have to worry about having a huge catalog, which is just annoying, or paying a bunch on single that you can't afford just to play a good deck. If you guys want a more in-depth explanation of how to play the game, I would gladly make a video for it. It's actually quite a fun game to play. I'm enjoying it a lot as just a kind of a secondary hobby. Or if you want me to get this non-Yu-Gi-Oh garbage off your YouTube page, you could, you could say that one too. I would totally understand it. Top 10 anime betrayals. But guys, I'm gonna comment below what you guys think of Keyforge. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will see you guys next time for the very last GX set. Light up the Thraxhone. In here. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.